Welcome back to a very British space program. Last episode, we launched our first craft into space. Uh, this time, we're going to try and go a bit higher and um, ideally try and bring something back. Um, please join us. So we're going to choose um, a couple of missions here that are available. So when you get to this point in uh, RP1, you get quite a few different missions. We're going to take the uh, sounding rocket mission, which means we've got to send 110 units of sounding rocket to 150 kilometers. Last time we went a lot higher than that, but we didn't have as much um, payload, so that might impact it. And we're also going to send a suborbital rocket. So it's going to be a suborbital rocket that returns. We've got to rescue the capsule. So I decided why don't we just build one rocket to do both? I'm feeling very confident at that point, uh, at this point, at that point, anyway. Um, I decided that, you know, our last rocket got really high up in the air. It was shocked by how, how high it actually got up out of the uh, atmosphere. So I thought, okay, it's, it's a little bit of excess sounding rocket payload, that's fine. And then we've got to stick some uh, some parachutes on, that's dead easy. So what I did was we've we've created an extra, um, an extra fuel tank there or tank of whatever and we're going to put our sounding payload into that you can see me putting that in just making sure it's the right amount um, th and then we just make it larger until we get to the right size we're trying to minimize the amount of tankage really because every extra bit of tankage you have is is wasted mass particularly at the start of the the game when you've got very poor sort of um, tankage available it's very heavy for what it does you want to try and minimize that as much as possible um, so we've got this craft we've done that and then i stick on a couple of decouplers and we're going to basically have part of it return because we don't need the sounding rocket payload to come back we can get rid of that when it's high altitude so in my mind i'm thinking we take a probe core up there we put a couple of decouplers on either side of it and uh, we, we bring it back down easy and, and the rest of the rocket can can burn up or do whatever it wants um, got to put a parachute on obviously got to scale it down um yeah, real shoots. I, I love this mod. It's, it's actually, I prefer it so much to, to standard uh, parachutes and things like that. But yeah, just remember to set it up properly. I might not have. That was that's something that I think being away from using it for a while has actually been a problem. So this is the, the Red Maiden 3A because we've made a slight modification to it. I think uh, we've, we've enlarged tanks a little bit, just, just made it a little bit more efficient. Um, and, and then I save an uh, alternative version. So I save the Red Maiden 3B where I've actually taken that extra sounding sounding rocket payload off and then we're going to have the uh, the red maiden 3c which is just going to be the sounding payload alone and, and i built these two um alternatives just in case uh, i was i was being overconfident um but i was i was pretty sure that actually i could with one rocket do both of these tasks so let's go to the pad welcome to the launch pad and we are going to get going as soon as possible we've got to wait for the engines to heat up and there we go look at that i love that i love that launch this is a nice launch actually um this is a big craft i'm, I'm sure it's got enough fuel to get up there though but um we will see it's it's going really straight actually i was worried if we, we might we might have been lacking the delta v if it had sort of teetered off to one side but straight up it should be fine um somebody asked actually in one of the comments for episode one uh, i can't remember if it was actually in youtube or on um discord or something like that um they actually said you know it's crazy that the, the british used HTP, why use HTP? It's crazy dangerous stuff when it's, you know, it's it's concentrated. Um, a number of reasons, and I sort of touched on this in the first episode, as our engine runs beautifully, and I'm going to try and talk a bit as this is going going on. Um, primarily, HTP was, was, was easy for them to, to sort of play with. Um, it provided an, an oxidizer that was pretty dense, and it, and it meant that they could number one transport around really easily in tankers but number two they could actually build rockets that were pretty small so you see this craft here actually has a lot of fuel on board but it's actually very small um it burns for for you know two minutes we've got two minutes of burn time here um which is is actually quite staggering because if you look at the the for example the whack corporal it's its engines would be a lot less burn time that to start off with and you'd actually have tankage that was comparable in, in ways. Um, if this had been a, uh, a Kerolox, the, the oxygen component of the tankage would have been considerably bigger than this. And hydrogen, massive. Mm, however, 
yes the tankage is smaller but the specific impulse is less so in the world of rockets everybody goes on about specific impulse and things like that and it's often it's often over focused on it is key it is key you want a, a really efficient engine you want to get as much energy per kilogram as possible you want to get as much delta v as you can however and this is the important thing if you ever oh we just release the uh, top there it's gone nicely hasn't it um i don't think we're going to make this though no we're not <laughs> Oh great, I've been not watching the rocket and I've just realised we're not going to make either altitude and this isn't going to get... Okay, well at least we'll get some science from somewhere. Okay, and the parachutes are not going to open right now, speed it up a bit because this is going to be a fail. Yeah, so um, ISP, uh, specific impulse, is not the only thing to take into account. Um, for example, if I have a Hydrolox engine, I have a massive tankage with it. Um, with with a, with a small craft like this, with a huge tank at this tech level, the tank would have weighed a, a massive amount, and that would have you know counteracted a large proportion of that specific impulse. Um, at this time period, this rocket engine is actually beautiful because I can have really small tankage um, with a lot of oxidizer in there, a lot of fuel, um, and I don't carry the massive weight penalties for, for example liquid oxygen which would be you know much more space required much more tank for the same amount of oxidizing power um later on when you get balloon tanks and we're going to come through is this going to i don't I'm, I'm just trying to keep an eye on the the reheating here i'm hoping it's going to be okay yeah um later on as tank technology gets better uh, the, the the move towards hydrolox and things like that becomes much more attractive um but hydrolox with these first stage engines it, you know it, you you're going to basically hamstring yourself the fact that you don't have it available is probably a positive particularly if you just start out because you'd probably rush to it and then wonder why it wasn't working very well um but yeah that's the reason that they used htp interestingly there is a there is a, a number of craft being developed in the uk now that are actually using htp as the oxidizer um so 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 one of the companies that actually currently um, build skylark rockets they're actually looking at building and i think it's a skylaw rocket is it skylaw xl or something and it's got a a first stage that uses HT, htp um driven oxidizing engines and oh hey parachutes of what's going on with the parachutes actually did i set them at that height that's really slowed down a lot all of a sudden okay anyway yeah so so skylar are basically building their craft and and they're looking at they're actually looking at customers applying now to to use their small rocket that they're going to use launch um so htp has not gone away and it's still got a place i think mock it's very much a british sort of fuel i think and um it will be interesting to see how that goes i think i'm going to speed this up and i may talk to you about this in the future well past me would probably continue talking right now but i've, I've actually decided to speed this section up because one of the big mistakes I made was actually having the parachutes number one open quite early up, but number two, the main problem was I'd actually set them, I think, for the full mass of the full rocket. I'd not taken into account the decouplers. So if you actually look on the screen, you can see that that is actually falling at close to one meter per second. Normally you'd be looking at five meters per second. Um, this, this took an awful long time. You can see it's sped up nine times on the screen. It's also four times sped up, so it's like 30. It's 30 odd times faster than it should be. Anyway, we got some science from that at least. Um, yeah, not not exactly what I'd hoped for though. So anyway, we do at least get to spend some science and we can we can keep progressing our, our sort of science plans. Remember, we're still actually locked into actually having to complete this in a timely fashion. Um, unfortunately, no matter how much science I unlock, I'm still gonna have to wait for it to actually process the unlocking. So you can see I'm, I'm basically unlocking some extra rocket engines there. Luckily, we've already queued up the next missions, um, and it's just a matter of going through time to get to them, um, because we've already designed them. I've already identified now the floor. I'd actually sort of pre-identified it, which is a little annoying. Um, and while I was trying to save money and time in the first place, I've actually ended up costing myself the extra time of launching another rocket. So this is the sounding rocket. I, I do this one first on its own, so it's pure sounding rocket. And I'm going to do this as fast. I'm not going to. I'm not going to go back to live com on this one because. It was a pretty boring launch. In fact, it was it was very much like the launches you saw last time. It just goes up um, full thrust, and you see we're actually getting a very good sort of straight up um, flight here. We've got decent engine use. I still don't have an engine failure, which is 
staggering. The uh, the gamma engines were were very efficient and very well, not very efficient. They were efficient, but they were very effective and and didn't tend to fail very very much, particularly the later versions. Um, I think uh, you had, they had a record of something like 20, 30 test uh, test flights and something like that without a failure. Um, this, however, is not one of those later engines. It actually has quite a high failure rate built in, but we've just been very lucky for it. I'm sure I'm going to pay for that later at some point, but we will see. So this, this craft just went straight up, got to its target altitude, and then it just came straight down. And I, I was just playing around right now with Kerbalism and its science system because I'm still trying to sort of understand how it works a bit. And of course it burned up. I did did expect it to completely burn up. And um, and then I noticed that the actual avionics unit survived, which I thought was quite interesting. Is it made of, they get, don't know what, heat proof tiles. So the important thing was um, I remembered that uh, our previous flight, the parachutes were an absolute nightmare. So one thing you can do, even if you've started the building of a craft in RP1, uh, if you don't play RP1, if you do, you know all this already. You can bring it back in and you can do edits. So I decided to make a, a slight modification. I went in and I actually had a look at how the parachutes were set up and I made some changes and it actually lightened the load considerably. I do actually wonder whether if I'd had done this um, previously with the, uh, with the with the first rocket where I was being overconfident, whether it would have actually um, been possible to get to the altitude because we only just missed the required altitude. And I think it may have been down to the, the over, overly heavy parachutes. These parachutes can get awfully heavy if you don't actually uh, tool them properly. Um, also remember, you know, um, your your speed in, on landing is important. Um, you can be a bit, yeah, play around with it. So um, we uh, we do accept another contract, and this is a, an 80 unit sounding contract to 160 kilometers. I think it's considered to be uh, a difficult or yeah difficult sounding rocket payload even though it's actually smaller in effect than the, the first one that we did in this episode um i'm not going to make you watch me do that one i'll do that later i might attach it to the start of the next episode so let's get to the the big one right we are on the launch pad and this time this has to go right so this is going to be our second t attempt at returning so we're going to um get the engines already are we good i think everything's good we need to check everything it's good yes okay just yeah We'll just put some things there just in case I mess this up this time. So engines are going, let them get to full power and then off we go. So this is nice and straight. We've not got too much deviation. What I have to be aware of is are we gonna get the right height? I need to get that, that height required for this suborbital return, but I also need to not go too high. Um, in the last flight, I, w I, I, I think I mentioned, I was concerned about re-entry heating and things like that because we're going straight up. There is always a possibility that you're going to come straight down. You're going to go too fast. You're going to reheat. You're going to overheat and burn up. Now, I, I'm. We're going to have a quite a small, a small unit coming back down. It's going to be potentially quite dense because it's just the avionics, and its cross section is not going to be massive. At least it's not going to have the pointy cone on the end of it, uh, because that sometimes leads to craziness. Because you, you, you actually you want to lose some of the speed higher up in the atmosphere, and you don't do that if you're quite aerodynamic. In an ideal world, I'd put some fins on it, and I should have. I I do wonder sometimes whether you should actually um, put your avionics at the bottom of the craft and just detach the top, and and you've got your your fins and whatnot acting as as increased uh, drag. But anyway, um, so we're going up nicely. Um, it is a it is going well. I'm I'm concerned that we get to the right altitude. I think we're going to be all right. I think we're going to be okay because we've got quite a bit of fuel left unless we have an engine failure which would be which would really top this mission off actually which would mean I'd have to do it yet again um, you can hear the sounds actually died away I, mean, I want to start whispering because it's got really quiet um, yep yeah, and we'll just stop it there I don't want to go too far yeah I think we've got enough there I think the resistance is not going to be too much the sounds died off we've killed the engines got a lot of fuel left in it. It's actually good that I've de designed this to decouple because um, if I hadn't, um, we'd be taking a lot of weight back down. So um, we'll see how it goes. Let's speed it up a little bit, just get through this bit. Um, I just want to see it get out of the atmosphere. That's a beautiful view though, isn't it? I mean, I do I do think realism overhaul and the uh, environmental mods and things like that just make it 
stunningly staggering. Um, even even on stock now, I think I, I you know I have to put something on, otherwise it, it just it, once you've played uh, um, Realism Overhaul and RSS and things like that, I think it's just it, it does spoil Kerbal a little bit for you. Right, let's get that off. Now I don't I don't I hope that's not giving us too much of a push. I was thinking of leaving that till we came down, but yeah. All right, and I can't do the parachutes because even though I've done them, I'm now going the wrong way, so I've got to slow down, and then I have to. Right, so I'm ready. We just now I can do that. I can now arm them. Yep, we'll arm them. Right, so um, at this point, I'm speeding up time because uh, this fall back to Earth was actually very slow. So you've actually got future me talking over now. I've actually cut out my own voice. Um, yeah, this this whole process took quite quite a while. Um, interestingly, uh, the the gamma engines were actually used for basically this task. They they were used in the Black Knight craft where there was four of them, um, and and that craft was basically designed to carry out re-entry like this, not with parachutes or anything like that, but actually just re-entry for nuclear warheads. Um, Black Knight was was part of the the British plan to have intercontinental ballistic uh, nuclear weapons. Um, and one thing that they'd identified was the need for that re-entry warhead to be able to survive and, and, and so forth. Um, yeah, I, I had a parachute issue. You can see a tiny little parachute and a very big one. Obviously, um, I need to make sure I edit both parachutes in the actual set instead of just one. So yeah, Black Black Knight was used for this. It was also used in, in, or proposed to be used for some, some actual orbital work as well. And it was a brilliant little test bed for the gamma engines. Um, you can see here we're just floating down through the air now it's a pretty it's a pretty safe return actually it, there's been no major sort of stresses on the craft i speed it up we're, we're still uh because i've only edited one of the parachutes we're still falling at a stupidly slow level um and i won't make you watch that so again we're, we're going at 30 times the thing i actually had to sit and watch this and it was um it was just draining um Black Knight never actually, I don't believe, did anything where you actually had a soft landing of, a, of, a, of an object. They were very much sort of uh, ballistic arcs, re-entry, re-entry heating. Let's look at what comes down. So there we go. We have finally returned a payload from from outside of the atmosphere. We get a bunch of science and we're just looking around now to see, well, what can we spend it? We'll get, we'll get a bit of avionics because that makes things lighter. Um, I really want solar panels because they're going to be useful at some point. But um, do I need them right now? There's a big debate there. But while I'm doing that, I'll see you next time.